My name is Caitlin. Welcome to Crestview. We're so glad you're here today. If you're in the Commons, start making your way into the auditorium because in about two minutes, we'll begin with an amazing worship set followed by an excellent message from John. Again, we're so glad you're here. Welcome to Crestview. morning. Thank you so much for being here. Would you stand? We welcome you here at the 10 a.m. service. If you're in the commons, please make your way in and let's worship together.
deserves all our worship this morning. And I will worship you. I'll worship you. sing this. Father, we're on our knees with every heartbeat. We bring you this offering. Lord, come and fill this place. Father, we're crying out. Spirit, we
for this time together uh, the first thing is you'll uh, is everybody got one of these if you need one of these you just raise your hand we got some folks that'll bring you one of these all right we got some folks up here moose in the front anybody else just raise your hand and they'll get one of these to you I don't even know what to call these exactly but a uh, little Lord's Supper now, there's a little word of instruction. There's two things to peel back there. The first one's kind of a clear plastic, and the other one's kind of the little light purple, light pink part. So you just, we're going to first do the, uh, just the plastic part here in just a minute. We, we begin a series of messages, and we're going to be talking about a heart check. And the Bible's very clear that any time that we take together the Lord's Supper, any time that we have communion, we are to do a heart check, that we would look at our own heart to see where we're at with God, uh, maybe where we need to hear from him, maybe where we need to change, maybe where we need to ask for forgiveness, and that we would do that kind of a heart check when we reflect upon all that Jesus has done for us. The Lord's Supper reminds us about his sacrifice upon the cross uh, his blood that was shed, his body that was broken for us so that we could be forgiven of our sins. And so right now, I just want to ask you to use this time. And we invite, invite you as a follower of Jesus Christ to just have this time of a heart check. That You would just, you and God, and if you would just bow your heads with me, I'm going to lead us in prayer in just a moment, but I just want you to have some time. Some time that I think would be appropriate to ask for forgiveness. A time to be, uh, that would be very appropriate to say, God, I just want to hear from you. God, um, I need to give you this. I haven't given you this. I've held on to it. And I need to give this to you. So whatever you need to do for this heart check time right now, would you just do that right now? And in just a moment, I'll lead us in prayer. Lord, we come to you and we ask you to search our hearts. It's one of the great prayers in the Bible that we ask you to search our hearts and to show us your way, not our way. And so as we come to this time of the Lord's Supper, we, we remember what you have done for us. But we also remember that you want to uh, have a relationship with us where we communicate, where we hear from you. And I pray we do that right now. For the ways that we need to be forgiven, for the ways that we need to hear from you, for the ways that we need to go your direction, for the ways that we need to give you those different parts of our lives sometimes we want to hold on to. And all those different things, I pray that right now that we would listen to you, that we would turn to you and ask you to work in our lives. Let this time be a time of just gratefulness for what you've done for us, but also a great time of remembering the many blessings you've given us and the ways that you want to work in our lives. Lord, help us right now to turn to you. And all this we pray in Jesus' name. It makes all the difference in this life and the life that is to come. Amen. I want to read from 1 Corinthians. Uh, this is chapter 11. And Paul's writing about taking the Lord's Supper. 
And so he says this. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And we had given thanks. He broke it and said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Would you just peel back that second part? Paul went on to write these words. In the same way, after the supper, he took the cup, Jesus did, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he returns. On that event that we call the Last Supper, when Jesus was with his disciples right before the cross, it says there that um, as they met together and they had that Last Supper together, then they sang and worshiped together. So I'm going to ask you, if you would, to stand right now, and let's do that very thing right now as we thank God and, and with grateful hearts.
Burden of my life, God. It's our only prayer just to hear your voice. Can y'all sing that chorus with me one more time? Speak now, Jesus. Speak into my. Father, that's our prayer this morning, is that we would hear your voice. God, thank you so much for this new season. God, I pray for everyone in this room that they would not leave the same. Our prayer as a worship team, God, is that we would be out of the way that they could see your goodness as we sing. Touch our hearts and our minds as Pastor John comes up. We love you and we thank you and all God's people said, amen. You may be seated. Good morning and welcome to Crestview. Whether you're joining us online or in person, we're glad that you're here. On your seat, you'll find our new connection card. We encourage everyone to fill it out digitally by using the QR code on the back or manually on the card itself. At the end of today's service, you may place your completed connection card and gifts to Crestview in the buckets passed down your row or in the giving boxes on your way out. If you're new to Crestview, stop by Crestview Information and grab a free tumbler and specialty coffee drink from us. We'd love to connect with you and answer any questions you may have. Now, grab your Bible or phone and your message notes and take time to pray and prepare your heart for this week's message. Glad you guys are here and those that are joining online. And I want to start off by talking to you about two things, your heart and dirt. Now, it's kind of an unusual combo, but that's exactly the combination that Jesus used to teach one of his most famous parables that we're going to look at today. And so I'm going to start off by doing a heart check. I've got this watch that will tell me how things are going. And my heart rate right now is 68 beats per minute. Now, my normal would be about 55 to 65, so it's a little elevated because you guys are scary, okay? That's really probably why it's up a little bit, a little bit scary. Now, the second part, dirt, let's talk about dirt. Yeah, I think about dirt. I don't know what you think about, but what I think about when I think of dirt, I, I think about kids playing in the dirt. I think about something like this picture that is, you know, like, hey, it's fun, I got to play in the dirt, you know, this kind of, uh, that sort of idea. Well, Jesus is going to put both of these together. See, dirt is more than something that just kids like to play in. What you have when you have dirt is you have this, this kind of environment, this kind of medium for growth. And Jesus is going to talk about that, how that it really truly is a vehicle for growth. And so in this series, we're going to talk about our hearts. And we're going to talk about dirt. And really, our hearts are like dirt because our hearts determine what will grow in our life and what won't grow in our life. So really, our hearts are pretty important when it comes to growth and what God wants to do. So for the next four weeks, we're going to look at one parable. We're going to look at it every week. And we're going to look at the four different soils that Jesus talked about in this well-known parable and it is found in Luke chapter 8, and it's called the parable of the farmer scattering seed. Okay? And let me tell you what's going to happen in this series. You're going to figure out which of the four soils you are. You're going to know I'm this. This is where I'm at right now. 
And we're going to look at each one of those each week, and you're going to find yourself there. Now, here's what you need to know. We are all at different times in different places here in this parable that Jesus taught. We're the different soils at different times and it, that can move back and forth. But no matter where you are, always realize that God loves you. He has a purpose for you, and he wants you to hear from him no matter what. So we're going to look at that sort of thing. So the tension that we want to chase in this series is, am I hearing from God? Does God's word, do I, do I hear from him? Am I hearing? And it all is about the condition of our hearts, whether or not, and whatever our answer is to that question, am I hearing from God? Now, we've gone through these years that we're going through, and, you know, I don't know if you're in the place where you go, boy, I've, I've really heard from God recently. I mean, in the last couple of years, man, I've really heard from God. And maybe you've gone, you know, life's been pretty silent, really. And I know I need to hear, but I'm, honestly, I haven't heard in a while. I haven't heard anything from God in a while. I don't know where you are in that kind of continuum there, but we're going to ask that question a lot. What are you hearing from God? What does God want to say to you? And so Jesus is going to talk about these four kinds of hearts, four different kinds of soils. And again, we're going to focus on a different one each week. And today we're going to talk about faint-hearted. And so let's look at, as we're looking at these four conditions of our life that can help us, harm us, um, all those kinds of things. Let's look at this parable. I want to invite you to turn to Luke. Matthew, Mark, Luke in the New Testament, third book of the New Testament. We're going to look at chapter 8 and begin in verse 4. And here's what it says in verse 4. While a large crowd was gathering and people were coming to Jesus from town after town, he told this parable. Now I want you to start off by imagining yourself in that crowd. Now in that crowd with Jesus, there's all kinds of people. There's skeptical people. There's people that are really eager to hear. There's people that don't believe. In fact, are opposed to Jesus. There's people that are kind of neutral. Well, I'm going to check this out. I'm not sure what I really think about this and Jesus and all this sort of thing. So you've got all types of people in that crowd. And Jesus steps up to speak. And I'm sure they're expecting something pretty dramatic. You know, pretty, you know, like, wow, this is unbelievable. So let's look at what Jesus says, and this is verses 5 through 8. A farmer went out to sow his seed. And he was scattering the seed. Some fell along the path, and it was trampled on, and the birds ate it up. Some fell on rocky ground, and when it came up, the plants withered because they had no moisture. Other seed fell among thorns, which grew up with it and choked the plants. And still other seed fell on good soil. It came up and yielded a crop a hundred times more than was sown. And when he had said this, he called out, Whoever has ears to hear, let him hear. Now, I, I just want you to think about the end of that. He does this little story, this parable about a farmer and seed, and he goes, Hey, just want to let you know, I hope you have ears to hear. Drops the mic and leaves. Thank you very much. Hope you get it. Bye bye. Now, wait a minute. People got to be going, wait, whoa, whoa, I don't understand. I got ears. They're right here. And what do you mean? We all got ears. What are you talking about hearing here? What is the deal here? What is the point you're trying to make, Jesus? And Jesus is trying to make a very important point. And this soil that we're first going to talk about, this, this, soil on, this soil that is on the path where the seed goes, is kind of like someone who hears, but they don't hear. They may have ears, but they don't hear. He's going to kind of talk about that, so, that same sort of process. And everybody in the crowd kind of has the same reaction. What does this mean? What do you, even the disciples are going, we don't understand. We don't get it. Do you not? And Jesus is thinking, you don't see it? You don't get it? It reminded me of when my brother, who's a pastor, uh, received his doctorate. We, we, up, we went up to Fort Worth. And we were all going to the graduation, so it was my wife and I and my brother and his wife. 
And we went through graduation and kind of celebrated with him. And my brother goes, he says this, hey, you know, we've done all this academic stuff. I'm kind of tired of it. How about we just kind of go to a mindless movie? We all go, great. What movie do you want to go to? Now, this is years ago, and some of you have seen this movie. It's called Dumb and Dumber. Is the movie that we went to go see. And we are watching this movie. And I remember looking over at my brother, and we are, I mean, I'm all, almost falling out of my chair, okay, laughing so hard. My brother is too. And then we notice the wives. My wife is sitting there going like this. I can tell her eyes are rolling back in her head without even in the dark. And my brother's wife, Tasha, she's doing the exact same thing. And we're laughing. We're like, and we get out of the movie, and we're going, ah, that was a great movie. And they're going, are you serious? Did you guys like that? And we're going, did you not see it? I mean, did you not watch the movie? I mean, did you not get it? Well, it's kind of like that. Everybody who hears Jesus' story is going, we don't get it. What are you talking about? What's going on here? What's happening? Now, the disciples even come to Jesus and say, Jesus, kind of explain this, but don't miss this. The disciples didn't get it, but they kept listening. They kept saying, we want to listen. We want to hear. We want to know what this is all about. So let's look at now verses 9 and 10, because Jesus says, okay, I'm going to kind of explain some of these things for you. His disciples asked him what this parable meant, and he said, The knowledge of the secrets of the kingdom of God has been given to you, but to others I speak in parables, so that though seeing, they may not see, and though hearing, they may not understand. Now let me tell you what Jesus is basically asking. Are you hearing from God? Not everybody's going to understand. Some of these parables are hard to understand, and he goes, it's on purpose, But if you've got ears to hear, you're going to hear. Are you really listening to God? Are you really hearing from God? Are you tuned in? It's one of the biggest problems we have. It's the biggest problem, I think, one of the biggest problems we have with our heart. Are we hearing from God or not? The Bible talks about that in several different places, about how important it is to hear from God. I want us to look at one verse that kind of talks about that and highlights it. It's Romans chapter 10, verse 17. And here's what it says. Consequently, faith comes from hearing the message, and the message is heard through the word about Christ. If we're going to follow after God, we've got to hear. So are you hearing? Are you listening? How's your hearing going? How's your spiritual hearing going in what God wants to say to you? See, God wants to do something in your life, but you have to hear his voice. You have to hear his word. If you don't hear it, you don't even know what he wants to do in your life. If you don't hear his word, if you don't hear his voice. Now, here's the thing you got to come to God, but not on your own terms. You don't say, God, it's on my own terms. I'm going to hear this, and I only want to hear about that. No, no, no. You come to God and say, here's my heart. I open up my heart to you. I give you my heart. And you don't come on your terms. You come on his terms. And you say, I want to hear from you. I want to know your direction. I want to know your word. Now, in Luke 8, let me tell you, for all of us here today, those online, God has something very specific he wants you to hear today. Something very specific he wants you to know and to hear. And that's really the point of Luke chapter 8 and what Jesus is talking about here. So then Jesus says, all right, I'm going to explain exactly what this means. So let's now go to verses 11 and 12 of Luke chapter 8. And Jesus is going to give a very very specific explanation. Here's what he says. This is the meaning of the parable. The seed is the word of God. And those along the path are the ones who hear, and then the devil comes and takes away the word from their hearts so that they may not believe and be saved. Now, in this series, like I mentioned earlier, each week we're going to look at these different soils. There's four of them. 
And we're going to look at how they are the condition of our hearts. All right? Now, we have here the path. Let me tell you what the path represents. The path represents kind of the ground that's kind of crusted over. The seed hits there, but it can't penetrate because it's just kind of too hard. It's, too, it's this picture of kind of being faint-hearted. I, I heard it, but I didn't really hear it. And it's that kind of idea of what's going on in this sort of soil. And Jesus explains, here's what it means. The seed, well, that's God's word. It's God's word that he is always trying to give us, communicate with us, and then you have the dirt, the soil, and that's the human heart. He says, that's what it means. So it's not just a story about a farmer. It's a story about your heart. It's a story about how God's word is trying to get into our life. And so this is people that have never heard the gospel. They never heard the truth about God. Well, they've heard it maybe, but they haven't really heard it. So they've never really heard it. They may have been in a place where words were being said, but they didn't really hear. It really fell on deaf ears. Well, so let's go back to verse 12 and read it again. Here's what it says. Those along the path are the ones who hear, and then the devil comes and takes away the word from their hearts so that they may not believe and be saved. Let me tell you what the devil's business is. It's the prevention business. You see, the devil cannot make you not hear. That's above his pay grade. He cannot do that. But what he can do is turn up the volume in your life, in our world, where there's so many other voices. Some of those voices are outside voices. Some of those voices are inside voices. You know, how we think of ourselves, how we talk to ourselves, what we focus in on, but just the static, the noise, and he can't turn the volume up so that we can't hear. But he can't stop the voice of God. God can be speaking, but he can try to drown it out. He's in the prevention business. And that's what he's going to do. And what he wants to do, ultimately, is make sure you don't, see the, you don't see and you don't hear the beautiful, wonderful message that Jesus Christ loves you. He has a purpose for your life. He can save you. He can forgive you. He doesn't want you to hear that. And so he's going to try to drown it out. That's going to be his purpose. Now, I don't know where you are today. Would you go, you know, I, I, I'm not hearing real well right now when it comes to God. I'm just not. I haven't heard for a long time. And maybe you've gone, no, I've heard recently. I've heard today. I've, I've heard from God. I don't know where you are in that. But when we ask the question, why can't I hear from God? Why am I not hearing from God? I, I think there's two main reasons. So let's look at what prevents us from hearing from God. Because I think there's two main reasons. And the first reason is this. When we go, I don't want to hear. I simply don't want to hear. Now this happens for lots of reasons. I don't want to hear God. Sometimes people... Get mad at God. That may be you. I'm mad at God. I'm mad at God because he did not keep this bad thing from happening. Or that he didn't bring this good thing to me that I think he should have brought. You know, I, you might be mad at God and you go, simply, I really don't want to hear. I don't want to hear at all. Sometimes it's because we go, I've built such a good life. I mean, I've got it all figured out. I mean, I've got my life built. Life is how I want it to be. I don't really want some other builder come in and say, you ought to tweak this, you ought to do this, you ought to go a different direction. I don't want to do that. I, I, I don't want to hear from somebody else. I sure don't want to hear from God because he may mess up what I've already got going here. So I just don't want to hear from him. I really don't want to hear. Now, there's a second reason. The second reason is this. I already know. Let me tell you, this is a dangerous one, because this one's in the church. This one is with Christians. This is where you go, I already know stuff. I mean, I go to church, I, I, yeah, I, look at the, I read the Bible, I, I know everything I need to know. i got enough of God. 
I got all the God that I need in my life. I'm kind of good. You know, back in the day, things were maybe a little different. I was growing or maybe hearing from God or some things were going on. But now, I'm good. I'm kind of just good. And here's the problem with that. For some of you today, God wants to tell you something brand new. For some of you today, he wants to remind you of something you've heard many, many times before. But see, this is when we get comfortable. Ah, I, I kind of already know. God, I'm good. I got everything I need. I've got everything built and I've got everything situated like I want to. I don't really need you. I've got all of you that I need. You see, but are you challenged by God? Are you hearing from him? Is he saying, are you hearing him say, here's a refocus you need to make. Here's a little turn you need to make in your life. Here's an adjustment you make. Here's a part of your life you haven't given me. You're in control. I'm not in control, God says. Are you hearing those kinds of things? You see, if you are living in either of these two reasons of why you don't hear from God... Here's the good news. You don't have to stay on the footpath. Everything starts and ends with a great solution. And here it is. You just need to listen. You just got to listen. God, I just want to hear from you. God, I just want to listen. God wants you to learn to listen. So can you hear it? Can you hear him? We sang about it earlier. It, it might just be a whisper. And if the, if the noise is too loud in your world, you're not going to hear it. So it might be real quiet. You know, we kind of want God to do something pretty dramatic. God, I'd love a light show or banner in the sky. Kind of design the clouds. I need to know what to do. Tell me, you know, big, dramatic. And God's going, you know, today I'm going to whisper. I'm just going to whisper. That's what I'm going to do. So are you hearing from him? Are you knowing what he has for you? You see, God is not going to do like we want him to do. Because as God is different, and he wants you to see differently, he wants you to hear differently, and he wants you to live differently. So he's going to have a different mode, but it all starts with whether or not we're willing to listen to what he has for us. You see... When we think about that, it makes me think about this question. Why do so many people come to faith when they hit rock bottom? You ever thought about that? It seems like when people really hit the end of themselves, they come to faith. Let me tell you why that is. Because when somebody or when we see all the stuff we built die or kind of be destroyed and it's all taken away all of a sudden the noise stops and we can hear we come to the end of ourselves and we realize I just need to listen and maybe for the first time we can listen and so that's why when we think about a jail cell or a hospital bed or the end of a relationship or we think about situations that we go through in life or we go through bankruptcy and all of a sudden the noise kind of stops, and we can hear that voice, and we're listening to what God has to say to us, and things begin to change. But listening is hard. Listening is difficult. It takes a lot of focus. It takes a lot of, I really need to hear, but God is still speaking, and God is still scattering seed. He's still doing that. And what we've got to do is put ourselves in positions where, and situations where we hear from him. So, have you heard lately? Are you hearing now? How have you been doing on the hearing from God and what he has for you? You see, we have to learn to listen. God wants you to do that. I want to wrap up with um, encouraging you to pray two prayers this week. I really want to encourage you to pray these prayers. Because let me tell you, these prayers will change you. Okay? Not because they're magic words or anything like that. Simply because they'll help you listen. And so let's look at these two prayers. Here's the first one. 
pray, God, what do you have for me? Now, I want you to notice that's a real open-ended prayer, okay? Now, if you come to God and say, God, I need a raise this week, that's not real open-ended. And by the way, have you ever noticed God doesn't do real well with ultimatums? He, he doesn't work real well. Or if we come to God and go, God, I'll tell you what, if you'll do this, I'll do that. Let me tell you what we're trying to do then is put God in our little box and then we get mad if he doesn't stay in our little box. But let me tell you what's going to happen. He's not going to stay in the box. He is too big a God. So it's an open-ended prayer and it's the idea of, God, what do you have for me? It goes something like this. God, today's your day. You gave me this day. So I, I just want to know, what do you have for me today? And I want to listen. I, I just want to listen of what you have for me. Let me tell you, it'll change you. You'll be amazed at what God will do. And here's a second prayer to pray. God, what do you want for me? What do you want for me? And this is simply a prayer about your relationship with God as we follow God. This reminded me this week of a great quote from Eugene Peterson, and this is what he wrote. The task is not to get God to do something I think needs done, but to become aware of what God is doing so that I can participate in that. So let me ask you today, are you ready to hear from God and what he has for you? Are you ready to say, God, I'm, I'm listening I'm listening. I'm going to try to get rid of some of the noise and the static, and I simply want to listen to you. Is your heart open enough for maybe the new thing God has for you, or maybe the nudge he wants to give you, or maybe the old thing he wants to remind you about, or the refocus that he has for your life, or the new direction he has for your life? Can you hear it? Do you hear it? I have one last question for you, and here's the last question. Do you have a time and a place to listen? You know, we pretty much operate in life with times and places. You know, time and place for lunch. You know, some of you are really into this. You know, if it's Tuesday, you're going to eat at this place, okay? Tuesdays, it's roses or something about Taco Tuesday or something, and that's made you, it's Tuesday, I'm, it's kind of your life is like time and place. Maybe it's about a project. Maybe it's different things with the family. Time and place, time and place. You need a time and place to say, I just got to make sure I listen. God, I just want to hear from you. I want to hear your voice. I want to know what you have for me. I simply want to listen. If you find yourself on the footpath, listen. Listen. That's what God wants you to do. And then you'll begin to hear your, you're going to be able to hear not just your thoughts. You're going to begin to hear what God wants to say to you. And as you begin to listen to God, everything else gets clear. As you clearly hear his voice, then he makes everything else clear. So it's this kind of, that's how it gets started. But then he keeps working and he keeps showing us. And we, can't, we want to spend more time with him. We want to go, God, I'm at that crossroads. What do you think? And we've just had this listening process as part of our life and what he wants to do in our life. But if we're on the footpath, I'm not sure I hear. I haven't heard for a long time. God says, would you just simply listen? It's kind of like this. It'd be like reading your Bible. Where you read your Bible and you go, God, here's your word. What do you want to say to me? For some of you, it might be, I've read that before, but for the first time, I know God has this for me. And for some of you, maybe it's for the first time you read something and God goes, that's for you. That verse is for you right now in your life. And we simply hear from God. See, if life is really silent sometimes, we really need to hear from God. And so my encouragement to you is to pray those prayers. God, what do you want to do? What, what do you want of me? What, what do you have for me today? What, what, how do you want to work in my life? 
I just want to finish with a great promise from Scripture. It's found in Jeremiah, Jeremiah 33, 3, and let me read it for you. It says this. Call to me, and I will answer you, and I will tell you great and hidden things that you have not known. You have there in your message notes, the blog and the podcast, which are always along the same theme that we've talked about today. So it's about hearing from God and kind of being faint-hearted. And so you can check that out, all that's on the webpage. But you have also a blank there for your next step. So what's your next step today? See, if you hear from God, he's got a next step. So what's your next step? I don't know what it is, but God does. And he wants you to hear from him today that you would hear his voice, and it will lead you to a next step. So what is your next step that he has for you? That is a blank, and that blank is for you, just to hear your next step. And here's what we want to do. As a close of the service, we want just you to have some time to hear his voice, a time of silence, a time of just, God, I need to give you this. God, I need to hear from you. God, I know that I need you to work in my life. I need you right now. And so I'm going to ask you, if you would, to bow your heads with me, and we're going to have just this time of silence as we simply turn to God and simply ask to hear his voice right now. And then I'll close our time in prayer. So let's bow our heads together right now. Lord, we thank you so much for your voice. I pray that we hear your voice, that we pray those prayers that help us to ask simply, God, what do you want from me? What do you have for me? And we'd be willing to hear your voice and to go forward. God, there, there's so much noise that we've got to overcome in our lives. We, sometimes we create that, and sometimes it's just around us. Would you help us to clearly hear your voice? To not be faint-hearted, but instead to let your word come into our heart and come into our lives and change us. And God, we need that. We need to hear your voice. We need to know what you have for us. We need to know your presence. We need to know your plans. We need to know your purpose. We need to know your direction. We need your help. So God, help us to hear your voice. Help us to check our hearts and to know kind of what's going on when it comes to our heart in you. Show that to us clearly. I pray for folks today that just simply need to hear, to listen. I pray for folks today that just need to hear your direction for them. God, help us to have that heart check where we realize who we are and where we are And then help us to simply listen as you would want us to. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to encourage you right now to take that connection card. That's your opportunity to connect with us. You can share prayer requests on there. Any spiritual commitments that you're making today. And what we ask you to do is take that card and place it there in the offering buckets as they're passed. I'm going to ask our ushers to come forward this time. You can obviously also give or use the giving boxes on your way out a little bit later. And if you would take that uh, bucket and just pass it down your row, and that will just help everyone have the opportunity to be able to turn in that connection card and to give as God leads them. And we thank you so much for your generosity. And one of the things we want to share with you during this time of worship, of giving, is basically another way you guys gave, and that is our four Midland week that we had where we were uh, working with a lot of different organizations and community partners that we work with all year long. And so I want you to be able to see this video right now about our four Midland week. So let's watch this right now.
gifts, snacks, and stuff like that. Uh, we always appreciate that from the community. Uh, it means a lot to us, um, them kind of giving back to us. Uh, thank you, absolutely, 100% thank you. We appreciate it, and it definitely will not go to waste. We, um, we will eat them all. Volunteers help change lives because we have a lot of community support, but we also are not very big as far as staff goes, and Safe Place is particularly grateful, especially on this day. It means the world to us. Um, our clients really don't get much outing to see other people. So when they see new faces come around, they are so excited and they want it. And for Crestview to be here, it's, it's not only heartfelt and warming for the individuals, but for us as a staff as well. It is very a very big uh, blessing to me. It's going to provide him of all the other things you know that the other kids have. But um, for me and my son, thank you from the bottom of our hearts. One of the real important things here at Cressy is the, how we work together with our community partners. We want to make a difference in our community. And I appreciate so much your involvement and how that's you guys' heart, too. And you show that by your involvement all the different things that we do with these different partners that we have across our community. Uh, one quick word before we go, and that is that if you are not in a group, we are signing up for that. Those groups are about to kick off for the fall. And so we want to encourage you to sign up. You can do that with that QR code that was on the back of your connection card. Or you can go to the information table that's right out this direction. And someone would be glad to talk to you about the different opportunities you have on both Sunday and during the week to be part of a group. And we want to encourage you to take that step if you have not, uh, you are not part of a group. Well, it's so great to um, have you guys with us today. Go find Dumb and Dumber and watch it this week. You'll be blessed. Uh, we're so glad you guys were here. You are dismissed. <laughs>